Okay, to start this presentation, we're going to talk about Rocky Mounted Spotted Fever. So it's first described in 1873 among the Indians of the Bitterroot Valley in Montana. 1904, Wilson and Chowing described the clinical and pathological aspects and suggested the involvement of ticks. So ticks were going to be the vector in this case. 1906, Riquettes began his study um, and also Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever in 1991 produced 635 cases in the U.S. and uh, the main season for exposure to these ticks um, is going to be from April to October and you can uh, yep so some general characteristics of rickettsia the organism of the family rickettsia are very small uh, structurally similar to gram negative rods although they stain poorly with the gram stain and grow only in the cytoplasm of eukaryotic cells. The pathogenistic, pathogenic species of rickettsia are maintained in animal and arthropod reservoirs and are transmitted by arthropod vectors um, such as ticks, mice, lice, 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 and fleas. Humans are accident, accidental hosts in this case. Um, rickettsia species are also subdivided into um, certain groups, fever groups and typhus groups, but I'm not going to talk about it in this video right now. So I just have a um, quick little slide here, rickettsia vectors and diseases. Um, so the very top is what we're looking at right here, the tick-borne variation. Um, so like I said a while ago, the reservoir ticks, wild rodents, um, the organism is uh, rickettsia obviously. Um, so these are also something to look at over here to the left, which is going to be your wood ticks, your dog ticks, and they're most of this Bacteria is mostly, mostly, mostly found in Mexico and Central and South America. Um, so in this slide, I'm talking about the invasion of rickettsia um, to the host. So the bacteria enter the eukaryotic cell by attaching to the host cell, uh, surface receptors, and stimulating phagocytosis. So after engulfment, rickettsia degrade the phagosome membrane by producing a phospholipase and must be released into the cytoplasm where the organism will not survive. Multiplication in the host cell by binary fission is slow. Generation time is, I don't know, roughly around 9 to 12 hours. And the spotted fever group of rickettsia grow in the cytoplasm and nucleus of infected cells and are continuously released from cells through long cytoplasmic projections. In contrast, the typhus group, which we're not going to go over here, accumulates in the cell cytoplasm until the cell membrane lice, signaling cell death and bacterial release. It is believed that the fundamental difference is caused by intracellular mobility. The spotted fever group is able to polymerize host cell actin, whereas the typhus group lacks the required gene. Once these bacteria are released from the host cell, they are unstable and die relatively quickly. And if you look to the right, the little right graph, it gives you a little diagram of what I just said, or if you were following along as I was reading. Also, have a little information about another um, species of rickettsia that you can um, take it with a grain of salt. Just a little fun fact that I thought was pretty interesting. So, I want to keep this video kind of short. Um, and um, so, this is basically the ending. Sorry if it was um, misleading, but the case study and treatment. So I have a little case study from my clinical microbiology class that I pulled from. Um, if you want to take a, take a look at it and read it, you're more than welcome to. Um, it just gives you an example of um, what a doctor would see, um, or yeah, what a doctor would see in this case of uh, Rocky Mountain Spot and Fever. And also, I want to go over the Rx real quick. Um, antibiotics are commonly used for oral treatment include doxycycline, amoxicillin, uh, things of that nature, things of that class, a broad spectrum antibiotic. So to recap, uh, the biology, virulence, and disease um, of rickettsia, rickettsia, rickettsiae, um, biology, um, they're small intracellular bacteria, they stain poorly with gram stain, best with uh, gizema or gimed stains, I hope I said that right, replication occurs in the cytoplasm and nucleus of endothelial cells with the resulting um, vasculitis. Intracellular growth protects the bacteria from immune clearance, and Rocky Mountain Spot and Fever characterized by high fever, severe headache, uh, myalgia, and rash complications common in untreated patients or where diagnosis is delayed. 
um, epidemiology of this bacteria is most common rickettsial pathogen is in the United States. The vector are going to be hard ticks, such as dog ticks, wood ticks, um, even some deer ticks, but not not, not a whole lot. And um, also, these ticks are the primary reservoirs and vectors of the of the bacteria. Distribution is in mostly in the Western Hemisphere in the United States. Um, infection is most common in the Southern Atlantic region. Uh, like I said a while ago, the diseases are most common April through September. And the diagnosis, what will be a very cool technique, I didn't put it in the slide here, but it's going to be um, a microimmunofluorescence test. And it is most commonly used for detecting Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Like I said a while ago, treatment is doxycycline. And um, the best thing for people to do is just uh, avoid the ticked areas, wear protective clothing, and, uh, and use effective um, insecticides. Um, also, there is no vaccine that is currently available, but I'm sure in the near future.